Hello students, welcome to the lecture on management control and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Define the meaning and concept of management control, describe the nature and scope of management control, discuss the implementation of management control systems, define the purpose and importance of management control, describe the impact of inadequate controls, define the characteristics of management control, describe the evolution of control systems in an organization. Let's start with the concept of management control. Managerial concerns tend to change frequently in young companies in an early stage of their growth phase. New functions emerge, levels in the management hierarchy multiply, jobs become more interrelated and new coordination and communication needs arise. A growing firm con confronts not only an internal transformation but also increasing environmental complexity. As a result, managers of early stage firms introduce formal management control systems which are formal information based procedures and statements used by managers to monitor and influence the behavior and activities in a firm. Such management control systems MCS, enable managers not only to cope with increasing information needs but also to avoid the loss of control because of lack of monitoring. My name is Matt McComb and I'm the menswear buying manager. My role as buying manager is to deliver the sales plan and profit plan for menswear um, and I do that by working with the design team, with the buying team and with the merchandising team to ensure that we've got the right range for our customer to the right distribution and at the right price. A designer draws up designs so they look for trends and use CAD CAM systems to design garments. What the buyer does is take those drawings and make them become a reality. So they liaise with their suppliers to make sure we've got the right fabric in place so that we can physically make the garments. So it differs slightly from a merchandising role in that they're more responsible for the movement of stock in and out of the business. My first role at George was an assistant buyer and subsequently I got promoted to be buyer. And after doing that for a few years, I fancied a change. So I applied for a design manager role and I had a fantastic time doing that. But really, I realized that my real passion in life was on the buying side. It was great because what's really good about George is that it can enable you to go from function to function and you can move around the business. Really, it's like one big team at George. And even being part of Walmart, it feels like the whole company is one big family almost. There are no closed doors at George. You can very much speak to anyone you need to speak to. To be a buyer at George, you need to have a real passion for product. Uh, you need to be energetic, motivated, and you have to be really good at working within a team. If anyone was thinking about joining George, I'd say go for it. It's a fantastic place to work with great development opportunities. Let us now discuss the meaning and the concept of management control. Management control system is defined as a set of policies and procedures designed to keep operations going according to plan. A management function aimed at achieving defined goals within an established timetable and usually understood to have three components, setting standards, measuring actual performance and taking corrective action. Management control, activities management control does not necessarily require that all actions will correspond to a determined plan such as a budget. Such plans are based on circumstances believed to exist at the time they were formulated. If these circumstances have changed at the time of implementation, the actions dictated by the plan may no longer be appropriate. While a thermostat responds to the actual temperature in a room, management control involves anticipating future conditions to ensure that the organization's objectives are attained. Meaning of management control. Control is a system of ensuring that the actual state of affairs is in line in the desired state of affairs. It is the process of ensuring that activities and plans are producing the desired results. Management control is the process by which managers assure that resources obtained and used effectively and efficiently in the accomplishment of the organization's objective. This definition highlights three main points about management control. First, management control is a process consisting of some interrelated and sequential steps. Secondly, management control aims at effectiveness and efficiency in the acquisition and utilization of resources such as money, materials, machinery and manpower. Thirdly, 
Management control is designed to further the objectives of DAI organization. This definition focuses on the measurement of performance and corrective actions for ensuring that planned targets are achieved. However, the ongoing nature of control is not explicit in the definition. Moreover, corrective actions are not confined to adjustments of operations alone. Management control may simply be defined as the continuous process of verifying whether actions are being taken as planned and ensuring that the desired objectives are being taken as planned and ensuring that the desired objectives are being efficient and effectively. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the nature and scope of management control. Management control is by nature both restrictive as well as regulative. Traditionally, management control has been associated with restricting people. Under the traditional view, control enables us to compare targets with actual performance and to take corrective action where deviation occur. This view takes the target as if and control system is designed to tell us how near we are to the planned course. This view of control is essentially a restricted short range one time regulating the existing program. An organization is a system of interrelated parts working in conjunction with each other for accomplishing its goals and those of the people involved in it. Management is the process whereby the resources of man, machine and material are integrated to accomplish these goals. A management control system is or should be coordinated, integrated system that is although data collected for one purpose may differ from those collected from another purpose. These data should be reconcilable with one another. In a sense, the management control system is a single system but more accurate interlocking subsystem. In organizations, three types of cost information are needed for management control. Costs by responsibility centers used for planning and controlling the activities of responsible survivors. Full program costs used for pricing and other operating decisions in normal circumstances. Setting performance standards, targets of performance are laid down for the total organization for each one of its divisions, departments, sections and for each employee. Control standards may be of the following types. Quantitative standards. These standards are laid down in physical and monetary units such as time, cost, revenue, etc. Such standards can be set in production, sales and finance areas wherein performance can be quantified. Qualitative standards. There are certain areas where performance cannot be measured in quantitative terms. Goodwill, employee morale, motivation, industrial relations and in similar areas standards can be laid down in tangible terms. Analyzing performance. The actual results are compared with the standards established and the variances analyzed to identify the reasons behind them. These analyses alert the managers when they obtain results are not meeting expectations and the gross may not be achieved. Let's know the meaning of implementation of management control systems. There is certainly no management control system will always be effective either in terms of design or in terms of implementation. These systems can only increase the probability of achievement of organizational objectives, of effectiveness, efficiency, accuracy of financial reporting and compliance. Management controls should be integrated or inbuilt into the organization's activities. These inbuilt control systems will influence the organization's capability to achieve its objectives and also help in improving the quality of its business operations. There are five components of management control, control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication, and monitoring the control system. Control activities refer to the policies and procedures that are used in an organization to provide a reasonable assurance that the directions and instructions given by the management are followed appropriately. The management controls are designed in such a way that the control activities involved are monitored on a continuous basis or separately. Continuous monitoring helps the organization by offering feedback on whether the control components are effective or ineffective. Separate assessment of activities helps in understanding the effectiveness of the control system as a whole and in turn of the continuous monitoring processes. Management control is implemented by a number of people both internal and external to the organization. Each of them plays a different role and has different responsibilities toward the effective implementation of a management control system. Control is a process that is executed by people and the relevant procedures should be practiced thoughtfully rather than mechanically. Consistency of execution is another major requirement for the success of the administration of management control systems in an organization. The issues faced in implementation can be those which hinder the management control process 
or dysfunctional consequences of implementing the management control system. Some issues that hinder management control processes are lack of proper organizational structure, management style, well-defined hierarchy, etc., lack of proper person job and person reward fit, deficiencies in training and developing employees, collusion between the controlled person and the controlling person, illegitimate use of the management authority, and lack of proper communication. The implementation and administration of management control systems can lead to dysfunctional consequences that are counterproductive to the achievement of organizational objectives. It is necessary to closely monitor the control system to see whether it is actually motivating managers and employees to act in the interest of the organization so that necessary corrective actions may be taken in the design and or implementation. Some dysfunctional consequences of management control systems are excessive quantification and attempts to measure all possible measures, presence of standard operating procedures curbing innovation and data manipulation. In the creativity phase, the decision-making power lies with the owners and communication is informal. In the direction phase, the organization adopts a functional structure with revenue centers and cost centers. It implements accounting, budgeting and inventory management systems. There is formalization of communication and incentive schemes. In the decentralization phase, profit centers are created, managers are motivated to increase autonomy and incentives, and internal control and reporting systems help monitor the activities of lower level managers. At TFS Marketplace, customer services are number one goal because they, they are the king to what we do every day. And without our customers coming in and making sure we meet those needs, we wouldn't be here. Our everyday work pace is a variety. It can start out slower in the mornings, but then ramp up to the middle of your day. And then dinner hour tends to get a little busier as people are getting out of work or restaurants or getting ready for their dinner hours. It's a nice, fun, active pace that gives you an opportunity to be out on the floor and constantly busy. There's a lot of opportunities for anyone who wants to seek those. At 145 stores, we're constantly growing. And if you are a the type of person who wants to move ahead and move on and develop your skills to where you can take on additional responsibilities, those opportunities are there. GFS Marketplace and Gordon Food Service is flexible for families. I'm a single mom and I know what it's like to have a hectic schedule with other obligations, kids, sports, schools, and it's definitely an environment that you can work within and they are flexible. Our hours are flexible and we're open nights and weekends. It definitely gives you the flexibility to work a schedule to any family life. I have two favorite parts of why I like working for GFS Marketplace. One is to be able to work for a family that we know cares about both the community and their business that we run every day, but also to be able to take care of the customers and knowing that every person that walks in that door that we can make a difference in something that they're doing, whether it be helping a restaurant get an item that they're out of or helping a mom plan a graduation party or just helping someone plan their Christmas meal. We can make an impact every day. Purpose and importance of management control. A sound control system is needed for the following purposes. To measure progress. Under the planning process, the fundamental goals and objectives of the organization are established. The control process is necessary to measure progress towards these goals. According to Fayol, control consists in verifying whether everything occurs in conformity with the plan adopted, the instructions issued and the principles established. To uncover deviations. Several forces pull off the enterprise from its charted course. An efficient control system is required to detect these deviations before they become serious. The main forces due to which an organization may go astray are change, is an integral part of business environment. Market shifts, new products emerge, new materials are discovered, and new government policies are introduced. The control system enables a manager to detect changes that are affecting his organization. He can then take action to face the threats and exploit the opportunities which these changes create. Delegation. When a manager delegates authority, his responsibility to his own superior is not reduced. A manager needs a control system to determine whether his subordinates are accomplishing the tasks delegated to them. In the absence of a control system, he will not be able to check on the subordinates' progress and corrective action cannot be taken until after failures occurred. Importance of management control. Control is an indispensable function of management. Without control function, the management process is incomplete. In business organizations, the need for control arises due to several factors. First, it is difficult to establish fully accurate standards of performance in large and complex organizations. An executive needs all kinds of timely information which are not always available. 
Control is required to judge the accurate of standards. Secondly, there are several temptations in business. Employees are entrusted with large sums of money and valuable resources. It is through control that managers ensure that the resources of an organization are obtained and utilized effectively for the attainment of desired objectives. A good control system offers the following benefits. Guide to operations. Control guides behavior towards organizational goals. Lack of control results in error behaviors that may be detrimental to the goals. Policy verification. Control enables management to verify the quality of various plans. It may reveal that plans need to be redrawn or goals need to be modified. Changes in the environment may render the original plans non-workable or deficient. Managerial accountability. When a manager assigns some activities and delegates authority to his subordinates, he remains responsible for ultimate performance. Therefore, a manager should check up the performance of subordinates to ensure that they are utilizing the delegated authority in the desired manner. Employee morale. Control creates an atmosphere of order and discipline in the organization. Absence of control leads to a lowering of morale around employees because they cannot predict what will happen to them. They become the victims of the bias and repression of the superior. Impact of inadequate controls. Inadequate control process many times affects negatively on any organization or a firm. Many of the problems which an organization faces are magnitude of change. Control systems are mostly designed to cope with changes of a certain magnitude. Certain decisions are made regarding which of the variable in the system can change, how much they will change and what actions can be taken to correct these changes. The system is designed around these variables. Time rate of change. Time lags and feedbacks can cause severe problems. Such time lags tend to slow down the adaptive process, that is, they increase the length of the time it takes for the control system to respond. It is easy to see how time lags can de develop in a control system. Organizational control systems, particularly at higher levels in the organization, often depend on written reports for the sensed information and on written memos or directives as the corrective feedback. But it obviously takes time to write and transmit such information. Information overload. Information overload is another problem in a control system. If managers at all levels receive identical details about any event, they may be overburdened and may neglect their immediate responsibilities. They may also suggest remedies before the subordinates are given an opportunity to take action. Thus, in planning a control system, one must keep in mind the quantity and type of information that should reach every manager. Management Information System MIS, is an organized method by which managers at all levels in the organization are presented with needed information in the right form and at the right time so that they are in a position to perform their tasks well. Erroneous Standards Perhaps the most critical problem in a control system is that of some inadvertent mistake being committed in setting standards for comparison. Where mistakes in standards exist, it is obviously more difficult to discriminate between proper and improper output of the activity. Workers' resistance. Human behavior is complicated and it is not easy to impose controls without leading to conflicts. Employees regard and control system as a tool to exert pressure on them. Thus, a control system must first be sold before it is introduced. Employees dislike controls due to a variety of reasons. Failure to accept objectives. If a person fails to accept certain objectives, he may find the control mechanism that pushes him towards those objectives a distinct annoyance. Thus, a worker may not care to reduce waste if he thinks that this is not going to make any difference to his employer who is very rich. Unreasonable standards. A person may dislike control because he thinks the standard of performance set for him is too high. Thus, a salesman may object to his quota or the production department to a schedule for reducing inventories. Characteristic of management control The main characteristics of management control are Continuous process Management control is an ongoing process. It is dynamic, not static. Just as the navigator continually, continually takes reading to ascertain whether he is relative to a planned course, so should he business manager continually take reading to assure himself that his enterprise or department is on course. 
goal congruence. The purpose of management control is to encourage managers to take actions that are in the best interest of the company. Universality. Control function is required at every level of management and in every part of the organization. Financial structure. Except in rare cases, management control system is built around a financial structure. Evolution of control systems in an organization. A production schedule, when formed, is the single most effective performance measurement for production operations. It is better than a comparison with other firms because it is designed to reflect own work situations. Inventory control. Inventories form a major share of investment in most businesses, ranging from 30 to 40 percent of total assets in retail and wholesale trade and from 15 to 25 percent in manufacturing organizations. Inventory control should therefore assure that the active inventory items are always in stock so that there are no lost sales because of a stockout condition, that the inactive items are carried at an essential minimum so that they do not tie up money and space. The stock cards are utilized to indicate the amount of inventory of a particular item on hand, the withdrawal of stocks in quantities, date-wise, the average usage rate and the reserve in stock at the point of recording. Now, in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Control is a system of ensuring that the actual state of affairs is in line in the desired state of affairs. Management control theory illustrating its gaps and suggesting a way forward. One of the functions of theories is to act as a tool to make sense out of issues. The purpose of a management control system is to monitor the fulfillment of responsibilities in each unit within the company. Management control system is defined a set of policies and procedures designed to keep operations going according to plan. To understand the systems and processes related to management control, it may be useful to draw upon meaning of control from other disciplines such as control system, engineering and cybernetics.